Hi guys, I'm just coming on here today to do a quick video about, well I say quick, it might end up long, I don't know. Um, I'm just jumping on here basically to do a quick video about my latest make. It's part of my Make 6, which if you you may have seen it on Instagram, the Sewist Ella has come up with a easier alternative to the usual Make 9. So if you don't know what Make 9 is, that's basically where you choose 9 patterns I guess this works with sewing, knitting and crochet because every every like kind of different crafting community I've seen does it. So I guess you could pick between sewing, crochet, knitting or you know, do a mix and match. So so Estella's decided to do a make six instead, which basically is supposed to be a really easy alternative to make nine. So what you do is you choose six patterns, whether they're you know, it's supposed to be like a stash thing, so you choose fabrics or so. It's not you have to pick six patterns to do. It you can pick a mixture of patterns or fabrics you've got in your stash that you want to use and stuff like that. So it's really simple. You basically just choose six things that you really want to make or six things of fabric you want to use or three patterns for three fabrics or two and four whatever basically. And you set yourself a timeline. So I've decided to do a six over a year because I know me and I change my mind from week to week. So like this week I could say, okay, I want to make this, this, this and this. And then next week I'll be like, oh, but I want to make that now, which is kind of what happened with my robes up there, which I'll get onto in a minute. Um, yeah, so I decided, you know, if I make these six things in the year in 2019 then I will be beyond happy with myself so yeah I've made progress on two of my make six so far which is that bag there the Marauders matte bag I don't count that as finished yet because there are a few little niggly bits that I'm not quite happy with so I'm gonna it's, it's on the inside really so it's not like you can tell but yeah I'll do a video on that when I count it's finished and the other one was these pretties here. So they're what I'm on to talk about today because they're finished. Um, yeah. So before I get into talking too much about the robes. Robes? <laughs> I'm going to talk about how, well, basically, it's a tissue pattern. So it's a tissue paper pattern. It's, honestly, it's brilliant. It's an official pattern from Simplicity, it's this one, 8723, and you get sizes from child all the way up to adult, I'll go through all that in a minute, but as you can see, it's your standard tissue paper pattern. Now, I'm Harry Potter obsessed, my friend bought this for me for Christmas, she's Harry Potter obsessed. So I'm Gryffindor, as you can probably tell from the robes, and she's a Hufflepuff. So, and you know, we're different, we're different sizes, my brother was a different, you know, I'm surrounded by Harry Potter fans, and I, do, I didn't want to cut my size out and then not be able to make them for the others, basically. So I used tracing paper. It just so happened that I had won a giveaway on Instagram about two weeks before I decided to do these to win a roll of pattern trace. Now this comes from Creative Industry, which I'll put a link in the description. Uh, I've been looking at this for a while. It's Swedish tracing paper. I've been looking at it for a while, but I was a bit like unsure. Because I've only been sewing for a year, I've been dressmaking for less than that, because I made my first one in like March, I think. No, maybe April, I don't know. But my first thing was my Jenny Smith Hepworth apron, which I showed on Instagram. I think that was March or April. Might have been April. Anyway, yeah, so I haven't been dressmaking a whole year, and I was a bit like, uh, do I need it? Do I need to... Is that, you know, I don't know if it's any good. Like, I know that it was used on the sewing bee, but because I've only been sewing a year, I never watched the sewing bee. I'm really excited for it to come back on the 12th of Feb. So yeah, 
Anyway, when I won this giveaway, I was over the moon because I was like, yes, I get to try it. <laughs> and so I'm going to just, I've got this scrap here. So this is so amazing. Like, I was, also, I was told, oh, you can use greaseproof paper, it's fine. Obviously, that's really easy to get. You can get it from anywhere. It's okay to use greaseproof paper. It is okay. But what you need to factor in is you only get it like that wide, which is, you know, it's not great for bigger parts. It means you have to stick it together, and greaseproof paper doesn't like to stick together because obviously the whole point is that it doesn't stick. So, and also you'll have the whole problem that. Yeah, when you're drawing, I found that my whole arm would end up black from the traced lines because the pencil or the pen just doesn't want to stick to it. So, anyway, back to this. I was so excited to use this. So, this is just an offcut of something that I've made. So, I've used this three times now. So, I used it for my robes, my llama pyjamas, which you may have seen on my Instagram, which I'll show in another video later on. And now for another set of robes for my friend that are Hufflepuff. So I feel like I've got a good understanding of this now. Rather than, you know, just saying, oh, it's amazing, go buy it. And then, you know. But yeah, so I reached out to Creative Industries just because I wanted to get correct information for you guys. So that I'm not saying, oh, you can do this with it, this with it. And the ad face really can't. And it's just, you know, a fluke that I managed to do it. So, anyway, they sent me a list of, you know, notes that, um, like, you know, just thing like, talking points, really. So, um, it's much stronger and more tear resistant than normal paper, which, as you can see, I'm putting some really force on that and it's not ripping. That's, you can see how strong that is. Um... It's amazing, basically, that that can happen. Like, I've got, I've got a little dog, and he likes to walk on my patterns, and he stretches. But when he stretches, he digs his claws in. He's done that on this, and it hasn't ripped. And he's he's got quite sharp claws. Like he's, he won't let you file them or anything. So it's like he, it files as anyway. Enough about the dog. So yeah, he can't rip that. So it's quite, it's really reassuring for me knowing that as I'm pinning the pattern to the fabric I don't have to worry about it tearing and you, you know by putting the pins in I'm going to ruin it it me it means that you can take your favorite pattern trace it off and preserve it because we all have a favorite pattern right so my favorite pattern right now is definitely my Hogwarts robes <laughs> which yeah okay maybe I'm not going to make five sets of robes I'm not going to Hogwarts unfortunately but like my pajama pattern I do want to make that again in different fabric and I can because I've traced it with the pattern trace so I'm really happy about that and I don't know if you can see but it's fibrous it kind of feels like a light interfacing which means you can actually sew it so you can make a twirl out of this by sewing it. I haven't I haven't done that. So this is from the company themselves. I haven't tried that because I didn't know I could. Like it's not something that I knew. So yeah, anyway. So you can sew it to make a twirl if that's what you want to do. So like if you're you don't have to just use this for dress making projects. So like if you're making a bag or something and or designing your own bag or anything and you're not quite sure if it's gonna all fit together, you should pattern trace instead of your fabric and you don't waste it. So so actually this is a good point. So somebody that doesn't sew at all and has no, you know, um, sewing experience at all. I've you know, she's been to a few fabric shops with me but she's not she doesn't know about any of it. When I pulled this out to trace my robes pattern, I think, or maybe my pajama pattern. Anyway, when I pulled it out and she saw it, she actually thought that I was pulling out a roll of fabric because it, that's just how it feels. It feels like a really thin, nice, lightweight fabric. 
So if somebody that doesn't know anything about it and doesn't, you know, if they think it's an actual roll of fabric, then that tells you how mate how it feels and how good she touched it and like she'd seen it she just definitely thought he, she thought it was fabric because she said to me where did you get that fabric from and I was like it's not fabric but yeah so um it's made from eco-friendly abaca fibers so I had to google this because I didn't know how to pronounce abaca but apparently, I don't. I didn't want to say it wrong. And apparently, that's how you say it. But yeah, it means that you can compost the offcuts. So any offcuts you get that you can't use on small. So like for this, for this bit, it's quite a big offcut. So I can use that for an applique template or something. For the smaller pieces that you can't fit anything on, you can compost it. And I, I think that's amazing. In a world where there is so much waste. I think it's great that we've got a tracing paper that we can compost because as you know as sewists we we've well as everybody's really on being eco-friendly at the moment like uh, I've switched to silicone straws like a year and a half ago but yeah so I really love that about this is that I don't feel like I'm being bad for the environment by wanting to preserve my patterns I know it's a weird thing to feel that but yeah I do so it's one meter wide so I can't even fit it on the screen so yeah it's one meter wide and if you buy a roll it's 10 meters long so you've got plenty for doing those big projects like the robes were huge because they're literally one piece from the shoulder to the hem, which is like mid calf, they are huge pieces. They wouldn't have got done otherwise. And I'm tall, so if I need to, like with my llama pajamas, I had to extend the pattern pieces, like by two inches or something on the legs. So it was a godsend having this tracing paper, really. Um, what I really like is how see through it is. So. I'll try and show you as best I can so as you can see you can pretty much see the pattern through it which means that it's going to be easy to trace like a few of the pattern pieces in there the lines had transferred onto like they'd kind of rubbed off a little bit in places so they're a bit paler and I was a bit concerned that I wasn't going to be able to see it and I was thinking oh well I can always go over the lines with a sharpie on the tissue paper and then put the trace but no the pattern trace is thin enough but durable enough to put it on top and see the even the faintest of lines which is a blessing really it saves so much time um you can iron it so now this is something i've done i folded up my robes patterns until i was ready to cut the fabric like i folded all the pieces because the pieces were like as I said, they were massive, so they were going to take up so much room if I just left them laying flat. So I thought, you know what, I'll fold it and just iron it like I would do a normal, like I did the actual main pattern. So I used a low heat, so I used one dot setting on my iron and made sure it was dry iron, no steam, like no residual steam or anything. I just ran the iron over it lightly to get the creases out and it worked perfectly. There was no you know there's no dodgy bits or anything so yeah it means that you know you can you can preserve your patterns perfectly and use them again and again and again and I really do love that about it I know I'm saying that a lot but I just really love this product I will be using it for now, from now on basically this will be what I use for all my patterns because it's just brilliant absolutely brilliant stuff but yes so creative industry has actually given me a 10% off code for you guys um, it works on everything there's no expiry date and if you're in the UK you get free postage anyway it's a little bit crafty I'm gonna put it in a box here for you um, yeah so that was really nice of them uh, go give them a like on Instagram like if you follow if you're on Instagram go give them a follow and have a look they're always sharing stuff in their stories about, you know, how they're using pattern trace and they're always sharing something on there. They've got some amazing products on there. Like, I, there is so much I want. 
and you can't and you don't just have to use it on pattern trace you can use it on anything so if you go oh, okay well i don't really want pattern trace i've i've got some you can use that 10 percent off on anything on their website you just have to enter that when you like, check out so that's all about the pattern trace now i'm going to talk to you about the robes themselves so as i said this is the pattern i made a few changes so you can see that on the robes they've got the house colors here and like you know all in the hood and that so basically i looked at the pat i looked at the yeah here you go so I've colour coded mine so that I can, because we work in metres, whereas this is all in yards, and this side's in metres, so I colour coded it so I could immediately go, okay, second green one or whatever, I need this much. So, it says to use gabardine and satin. So, gabardine for the white, for the black, white for the black and then the satin for the contrast I didn't like the idea of using satin I don't know why I just thought no I don't want to use that so I found some poly cotton that I really liked and also I was being stubborn and decided I didn't want to do it the way the pattern done it because on the pattern the contrast is just two strips down the front the hood and a bit across the back they're just facings and I thought do you know what I want it fully lined so well I, I was looking through pictures and um, like Hermione has it in the sleeves so I was like I want it fully lined it's not going to cost me that much more so I was like okay I'm going to have it fully lined end of so I did that and I used poly cotton and it's, it's honestly great I love it and I made a few other changes so it says to use a bit of elastic cord to do the closure I'll put a picture like here so you can see what I mean so the it's basically got two buttons on it and then a loop it said to use a bit of elastic so a bit of black like cord elastic sew it into a loop and then stitch it and then put a button on top and then be able to loop it around the other or something some. I didn't like that idea at all um, I don't know why I just thought the elastic would look quite cheap so I'm aware that this is supposed to be like a fancy dress pattern instead of like movie quality but for me I want movie quality robes so I went about changing it to get it that way. So basically I just, what I did was I got my size. So I got my size off the back and then I went, you know, I went through the things and I was like, okay, so it says I need this much of the main and this much of the con for the contrast hidden the faces. And then I was like, okay, so... I'm not doing contrast, I'm doing fully lined, so that poly cotton was 45 inches wide, which meant I needed to buy a bit more of that than I did of the black gabardine, because that's 60 inches wide. So I just looked at the pattern, so mine is a medium, which is over here, I was like in between small and medium, so I thought oh, I'll just do the bigger size. And then I can wear something underneath it. So it says that I need four and a half in. Hang on. It says I need four and three quarter yards if it's 45 inch wide. And it says I need three and seven eighths of a yard if it's 60 inches wide. And then it says I need one and five eighths of a yard for the contrast. So instead of do, so then I came over here to the meters because you know we work in meters in the UK and basically it means that I need 4.4 meters if it's 45 inches wide and 3.6 meters if it's 60 inches wide. So 
my obviously the black fabric was 60 inches wide so i think i ordered four meters of that and then the red color the contrast was 45 so i ordered four and a half so i just ordered like the same the main amount again so i just completely ignored the contrast amount is that the right word is that i don't know anyway so I completely ignored that and just basically ordered fabric again like I was making the main part of the robe. So then I thought, okay, so in the pattern it says to interface the front facings and the back facing at the neck. So I was like, okay, there's a reason for that. So I'm going to do it. So I used the pattern pieces for the interface, for the facings, because there's a pattern piece for the front for the facings and there's a back piece. So I thought, okay, I'm going to use them to cut interfacing. So with the back facing, it's done on the fold. But the idea is, is that because the way I did it, I followed the, you know, I made the robes twice and then sewed them together, essentially. So I had to do mine slightly different. What you need to do if you're going to go for fully lined is you need to take the back facing piece do it on its own, so don't do it on the fold. So cut it double, so like fold your interfacing in half, but don't place it on the fold because you need to add the extra 5 8 seam allowance to that fold bit. Because on the actual, like on this pat, like if you're following the pattern, the bit across the back facing is cut on the fold from that piece, so the interfacing goes on that on the back of that. But because I've done it my like this way, where you base basically it's got a back a centre back seam both on the lining and the outer. Why did it take me so long to get to that? I don't know. But anyway, it's got a seam up the middle. So what you need to do is factor the seam allowances in for when you sew it together. So just place your back facing piece on. The, you can even do it if you can even do it when you're tracing it add the extra five eighths for it um, then you just sorry about that somebody just like came in so I was like, so I just stopped the video quick and thought I'll just you know pick it up again so yeah to make it fully lined you just need to basically order the amount where it's you know the biggest the bigger amount of fabric just Ignore the contrast hoods and facings bit entirely. If if you want to do the facings and the contrast hood, then do it. But if you want it fully lined, then you need to just look at the hood, like the actual robe amounts. It's not diff It's not difficult to work out. It's just kind of hard to explain. I'll, just, I'll I'll be doing a blog post on all this anyway. So if you're better with visuals, there'll be pictures and everything of that anyway. So yeah, but basically. I put the interface in on the lining on the front sections and across the back parts because there is no back facing the back facing in the pattern follows the like n the shoulders are under the hood so that's where I put the it matches up with the pattern pieces for the actual back it's kind of like a curved bit for the it's basically the back of the neckline so I cut that out of interfacing, added the extra, I uh, added the seam allowance to the side and I stuck it on both sides and then when I sewed the back seam it was kind of all structured. It did make a difference and I'm glad I did it because you know there's a lot of weight there because the hood's quite big. Uh, I'll post, uh, I'll show pictures like here of what the robes look like when they're on. Um, with the elastic I Basically what I did was I took an inch strip of the black gabardine fabric and I experimented. So I folded it in half and then folded it again so that I had like a quarter of an inch and then I stitched down the side but that resulted in this black piece which is not ideal. It kind of looks awkward when you're trying to think it's going to go over a thing. I got a picture of Hermione up, I think it's probably from 
the Prisoner of Azkaban or maybe the Goblet of Fire. I can't remember without looking at it kind of thing. And it shows that she has a loop for hers sewn into like the seam allowance between the red, like the lining and the actual outer. So that was what I was going to do anyway, but it was good to see it confirmed that that was kind of like a good idea, if you know what I mean. But I decided that it needed to be round because that just doesn't look right when you like loop it round. It just doesn't look right. So I then done it again, but this time I ladder stitched up the side to make a tube. And then I threaded this rat tail cord for it. And that's made this really nice like sausage almost so i put i think this is two millimeters sat, satin ratel and um i put three bits in there it you know it's giving it a good structure and then i sewed that into the seam allowance and looped it around the other button and it's great the only thing i will say is double check that because the first i pinned it into place and it was not it was a nice size but it moved when I was sewing it because it's such a, you know, it's such a big bit to go over but for the, with the sewing machine that it actually moved. And obviously I didn't think, oh, let's baste it in place. So um, when I actually finished it, I was wearing it and my brother was taking some photos and I was like, this keeps coming undone. What can I do to change it? In the end, I just unpicked the bottom hem and then just opened it was opened the seam up where it was and shortened it but yeah it hasn't made you know by me opening it up and restitching it hasn't made a difference to the robe itself it just means that that opening isn't so gaping it was a good like it was like this big and i'd initially pinned it to be that big so it had moved quite a bit and obviously i was excited so i wasn't really paying attention but yeah so i what other changes did I make? Um, the way I did it is I basically made the whole outer and then I made the whole lining up and then I put them right sides together and stitched from the hood, from the midpoint of the hood all the way down one side and then from the midpoint of the hood all the way down the other. Yes, that's what I did. And then when I turned it out it was all nice and stitched together. The only thing that I was a bit eh about was the cuffs, like the actual cuffs of the thing. So I s stitched them together, right sides together, and it wouldn't pull through at all. Like it, something weird had gone on. So I just thought, you know what? I don't need to do it like that. So I unpicked that and then I just top stitched it shut. Using my blind hem foot, I just butted it up against that edge. I moved my needle all the way over to the left and then I butted it up with that edge of the blind hem foot and then I just stitched it along so it's got like a millimetre, it's not so it looks really great. I'm really pleased with the way they turned out. Um, I also st stitched the hem before I turned it through so I, I left a gap that was big enough to, you know, you've got to leave a big enough gap to pull the whole thing through. So I left a gap probably about that much, I don't know, about nine inches I guess, I don't know maybe less I stitched all the way along and then I folded that under and pressed it so it was all nice and flat and then I turned it all out made sure it was all like turned through properly so the hood was pointed nicely and everything was like where it should be and then I basically just lined that opening up and then I top stitched all the way across the bottom of the hem which then obviously closed that gap and then I top stitched all the way around from one from one side of the hem all the way up the side, round the hood and then down. And I use because obviously I've got black on the top and red under the red underneath, I used black for the top thread in my machine, and then I used this red in the bottom. It's Gutterman 375 and it matches the fabric perfectly. Um, I got the fabric from Calico Lane. I'll put the link in the bot the description below so you can find it if you want it. And I got the actual patch from the plat pattern. <laughs> I'll get there in a second. The 
platform nine and three quarters shop um i love that shop and i could spend hours on that but yeah i saw the patch i was just like i'm getting it uh for the buttons i used millward 22 millimeter self cover buttons if you've never used these before what you basically do is you take a circle of fabric and then i can't show you because these are, hang on a minute and then you basically wrap it around this it's got to be slightly bigger than the button itself I can't tell you how much bigger because I didn't measure it you just need to experiment so you need to make it bigger than that I kind of went maybe that maybe half an inch all the way around and then as you can see on the back it's got like these little teeth can you see that there you go it's got little teeth so what I found easiest to do was do a line of running stitch around the edge of the circle fabric stick that in it and then pull the pull the stitches to pull it in and then you have this little bit that just clips on the back and you push it down and then it secures it all in place I really like the idea of using these because I wanted it, the buttons to match the rope perfectly whereas if I'd have bought ones that were pre-covered it wouldn't have done that so much so I was really happy with these uh, this is the first time I've used them and they're really good there's no tool required which is even better because you literally just need to buy a pack you only need two so you can get two robes out of these depending on what you want to use them for but you can use these for all sorts. Um, I know people use them in upholstery. So yeah, they're quite cool. Um, i trying to think if I made any other changes. Uh, not like... Oh, wand pocket. Okay, so the pattern itself has pockets in the actual robe. But I decided it had to have a wand pocket. <laughs> so that I could pull out my wand. You know, why not? So I basically... I have a noble collection. Try to put that back together. I have a noble collection wand. I have Hermione's wand, and I, what I did was I took a piece. It was probably five inches wide by you know just a little bit shorter than the wand itself. All the wands are different, so it's kind of hard to tell you what to do to fit. You know, if you want an internal pocket for your phone, that's cool too. You can do that. What I did was. Um, I got these two bits of I, it's in the lining so I got two bits of the red fabric that were like they are probably 5 by like 14 inches or something I stitched all the way around the edge I think I used I think I used my overlocker with a 5 8 seam allowance or I just ran it through with no with like no seam allowance I can't remember what the standard one is on my overlocker so like it didn't cut the edge anyway and I turned it through, I left one edge open obviously, and I turned it through and then I stitched it onto the lining before it was all put together. So I worked out roughly where I wanted it. I sewn, I sewed all the lining first and then tried it on and then worked out roughly where I'd be pulling the wand from. I'm right handed so I put it on the left side because it made more sense to me. But obviously if you're left handed you want it on the right side. No, nothing stopping you from doing that so I worked out kind of where I wanted it pinned it in place and stitched around the free edges but what I did was I kind of bunt, brought it in a bit so it wasn't flat so it had that kind of domed 3D so you could put the wand in it without it pulling because that would have been really annoying is trying to put this like cylindrical wand in something that's flat it would it would have just shown on the outside and I didn't want that so I kind of brought the sides in a tiny bit so that it kind of had some give in it um yeah what else did I do I think that's all the changes I made to this pattern I think so yeah so yeah um for my friend's Hufflepuff robes i She's shorter than me, so I've shortened the sleeves a little bit. 
not a lot just uh, three inches and I'll be making the actual ropes themselves shorter as well but I don't know how much until she tries them on so yeah I hope I'll probably be back with another video with Hufflepuff robes very soon um, don't forget there's a 10% off code for creative industries use it on anything I will definitely be ordering more from them I'll be ordering a lot from them very soon because they've got so much cool stuff and yeah I'll be back with more videos on I've got my crafting box I'm pointing over there because that's where the box is um, I've got my crafting box jumpsuit that one that, that's my next sewn project uh, it was going to be done before the robes but my excitement of fandom and Harry Potter got the better of me and I just couldn't say no so yeah <laughs> I'm weak <laughs> so yeah uh, I'll be back with lots more videos um, if there's anything you want to any more information you want to know just drop me a comment the blog post will be up at, like hopefully coinciding with this video there might be a little short delay between d depends if I can get it all to go at the same time hopefully they'll be uploaded together and that link will be there if not as soon as the blog post is live the link will be there it'll all be together eventually and it'll, there'll be only like maybe a few hours delay so yeah if you've got any questions about any of the changes I made just drop me a comment or find me on Instagram and drop me a message I'm, I'm happy to help anybody as you all know like I'm quite responsive with comments so um, yeah if you like this video give me a thumbs up if you want to see more you know, hit subscribe um, I'd love to if you do make the robes uh, I'd love to see I'd love to see them because you know I'd love to see, tell me what house you're in what what Hogwarts house are you drop me a comment um, leave your house animal like Gryffindors leave a lion Ravenclaws leave a raven Slytherin snake Hufflepuff leave me a badger let me know I like to know the percentages I don't know why but I do so yeah thank you for watching guys I hope you found this video informative and not too like rambling and oh my god Harry Potter but yeah thanks for watching guys